look into licensing here. We have three videos back to back that we're going to cover uh, licensing with. Um, we're going to try to make it fairly simple. Um, I, I will just lead this whole section off by telling you there is only one place that you can go for absolute certainty with respect to licensing, and that is, of course, with Microsoft. So I will show you the concepts, and I will tell you what I've learned and what I know. However, when it comes down to it, you still may want to double-check your facts, figures, thoughts, ideas with a Microsoft rep. Okay, that said. So let's talk about what licensing is. Right. When you think about licensing SQL Server, so when you're thinking about going through the buying process, it's really a four-step process. You pick out your edition. We've talked a little bit about editions. We will come back after we talk about licensing and then start kind of picking out which edition we should use. Okay. So you start by picking out your edition of SQL Server. Then you decide on a licensing model. And I will say, one and two might be flipped because there will be situations where, gosh, you know, if I go with this edition, with this licensing model, it's actually cheaper than it is with this edition and this licensing model, yet I'm not really losing anything because... So you could maybe flip one and two. That's a total fair thing here. Once you figure that out, get your price quote and then make your purchase. Okay, um, it is sort of beyond our scope to talk about getting price quotes and buying and who do you buy from and where do you buy. Um, you know, that's each of us has our own <laughs> demons to battle when it comes to uh, doing that sort of thing. So this section here, this next three videos, let's just focus on the decide on a licensing model idea. So for simplicity, also, let's not talk about the free versions. Let's not uh, talk about Express version, Express Edition, Evaluation, uh, or even Developer Edition, which isn't free, but it's a trivial like 40, 50 bucks. Um, so let's focus here on the what Microsoft calls the principal editions, Enterprise, Business Intelligence, and Standard. This is what most of us will use in the workplace. So if you needed a Features by Edition, Remember that this video does come with a PDF. Load up the PDF. You can click on the little Features by Edition link right there. Now, how do you go about buying SQL Server 2012, one of the principal editions? Super easy. You can go to any one of the retail stores on the web, uh, maybe even in person. I don't know. Uh, but you can actually buy a boxed DVD version. This is how I got my copy of SQL 2012. Went to a major retailer, bought the boxed version. They send me the box. It comes with a license code. Okay? The software actually has the software license code built into it. Now, you can also go to your hardware vendor, and you can buy it pre-installed on your hardware. This is a very popular um, way to do it for some of the smaller businesses. Now, you can also, of course, buy license keys with a download through your resellers, and then you can subscribe to one of many of Microsoft's programs, and they have a whole lot of programs, right? The old TechNet, which is now retired, um, you know, there's just a, a bunch of different programs with Microsoft that you may or may not be involved with at your company. The, the key point here is it's not difficult to find a way to get a copy of SQL Server. If you have $100,000 burning a hole in your pocket, you will be able to find somebody trying to sell you SQL Server 2012. It is kind of outside the scope of this course to go through all of Microsoft's plans and software assurance and extended this and that. That's kind of at such an organizational level, you'll need to familiarize yourself with whatever your company uh, has access to, and you may need to know more information. Okay, So what we need to do is talk about just the basic idea of the licensing model for SQL Server. Okay, Once you know what the licensing model is, you can then choose, should we belong to this program, or should I buy a box to DVD, etc. So we'll cover the basics. It is up to you to dig deeper and then verify what you need. In the PDF attached with this video, I have this licensing guide right here. Pull that up, and they it's kind of a marketing sheet, if you will, that will walk you through licensing. There are about four or five different licensing PDFs, and it's, uh, it's big business. This is you know millions and millions of dollars for Microsoft here, so it's a big deal. 
So there's two primary options for licensing SQL Server 2012. So you can read that as there's two primary licensing models for SQL Server 2012, okay? Number one is per client, okay? This is only for the business intelligence and standard editions. I have a little asterisk there because if you are upgrading from a prior version of SQL Server 2008 R2 Enterprise Edition and you're on Software Assurance, you might also be able to use that rolling forward. Okay, But going forward, it's good enough for you to understand that it's a either per client for business intelligence and standard or per CPU core. And that's only for enterprise and standard. That's right. Business intelligence does not have the CPU core licensing model. Okay? So we're going to talk about each of these. What we'll do is in this video, we will focus on the per client model. We'll come back in the next video and talk about the CPU core. And then we'll come back in the video after that, talk about virtualization, disaster recovery, and kind of tie up a few loose ends. So the client access model, the per device model, the per user model, okay, it's called the CAL model, client access license, okay. It's really a two-step process. Number one, you pay a flat fee licensing cost for the server license, okay. So yes, you have to go buy a server license for standard edition, a server license for business intelligence edition, can you buy a server license for Enterprise Edition? No, because Enterprise Edition is not sold using the CAL model. It's only sold using the CPU core model, okay? Once you have your server license, then you have to have a license for each of the devices or users, okay? So it's a client access model. Each client must then have their own license, okay? So you buy a server license, and then you buy a per user license okay so it works like this your license is you can buy a device license what we call a device cal okay and that is for non-human operated devices okay so if you have something like a a terminal or a a temperature scanner that stores its data inside of the sql server database it would be a device that requires a device cal okay that's not a human operated temperature excuse me, temperature sensor, sensor. So it still uses SQL Server, thus it needs a license. Okay? A user CAL is for human operated devices. Okay, So if we had a laptop and a user is using the laptop and needs access to the SQL Server, they must have a user CAL. Okay? So human operated devices, we get a user CAL, device operated, um, a non-human operated get a device CAL. There's no difference in the cost between them. They cost the exact same. You still buy a CAL, a client access license. Okay. Now the CAL must match the version. You can't use a SQL Server 2008 CAL with SQL Server 2012. Okay. That makes sense. Now CAL licensing makes sense in a few scenarios. Uh, just like CPU core licensing makes sense in a few scenarios here. Remember, though, that Business Intelligence Edition requires CAL licensing. There is no CPU core for Business Intelligence licensing. Okay? Uh, it is optional for the standard. That means that as a standard edition, when you've picked out that this is the edition you want to support, you kind of have to go through this little matrix to pick out whether or not it's cost effective to use CAL licensing or standard. And we'll walk through that. Okay? So if you're using standard edition, you should use CALs if you can easily count your users and devices. Okay, that's a critical piece here. You know how many are concurrent. Okay, that's a key thing. So your CAL only applies to concurrent users. If you had 100 users in a day, but only one of them at any time was connected to the SQL Server, you would only need one CAL. Okay. So it's concurrent users or devices. Okay? So you need to be able to use easily count those. Okay? And you are limited to a specific number of concurrent users. Okay? So this would really not work if you had 100 users and you had one cal, but you didn't know how many people were going to actually access the server concurrently. Okay? So you need to be able to have a way to limit uh, or to know how many that you're going to have. 
and you're not expecting to significantly add more users or, or devices. If we have 100 users today and we buy 100 cows. Well, at what point is it cheaper to buy the core, have bought the core licenses than to add on another 100 cows if we sign on 100 more people? Because that's the last part of this. And this is the tricky part. The cost of licensing by Cal is lower than the cost of licensing by CPU core model. And right now, we don't have enough information to really answer that because we haven't listened to the next video, and the next video talks about CPU core. Okay, But it's always going to come down to this. Should you use the Cal? I don't know. Is it going to be cheaper than the core? <laughs> because if it's not going to be cheaper than the core, you don't want to do it. Okay. The, I'll just give you a somewhat of a preview of the core licensing. Core licensing says unlimited users and devices. We don't have to count how many people we have. We don't care how many concurrent because we have paid for in advance an unlimited number. So you kind of have to get your calculator or your spreadsheet out and figure out, is it lower cost to go with the Cal model or the CPU core model? Now, if you are using the CAL model, the client access license model here, every user or device needs a CAL, even if they are not directly hitting the server, okay? This is a huge myth slash point of contention slash area of confusion for people in SQL Server. I don't know if it's intentional. You know, hey, I only bought five licenses because... We're just going using the web and only one connection is made to the server, okay? Or if it's actual confusion, confusion here. So take a website, for example. You may actually connect your website to the SQL server using, I'll tell you what, let's draw it out here because this is uh, so common uh, that I see this. So let's imagine here, um, I'll come down here and say, here's the, SQL Server, okay, so this is the, the Learn It First uh, SQL Server, okay, and, you know, here's the web, the cloud, the web, you know, it used to be uh, in the old days that you'd go through, you'd make a connection from a client, it would go in through the cloud, and then it would come out of the cloud, now the cloud means something different. I have to find a new analogy to draw because I've been drawing the, the cloud. So here is um, the, uh, let's do this. We'll draw. This is here our web server. Okay. And we then have lots of different clients, right? So. Here is a client making a connection to the web server, and here's another client making a connection to the web server, and here's another client, right, making a connection to the web server, and these are supposed to be uh, laptops, and I'm awful at <laughs> drawing these. But the question is here, and we'll, we'll draw a little phone here, right? So here's a, a phone right there. So here we have three clients making requests of the web server, the web server then makes the connection to the Learn It First SQL Server. Okay? So people will often say, how many licenses do I need? Well, you actually have three concurrent users. You have these three, so you would need three cows. But a lot of people say, well, wait a minute, there's actually only one connection to the database, so therefore I only need one connection. No, you do require three cows here. You require three licenses, one connection for every device or user that benefits from the data. Okay? And that's where people get tricked. Okay? So even though we're going through a middleware, a middle tier, we still require a license. Okay? So we're, which is kind of what makes cow licensing impractical for websites. You don't know how many users are, are going to be concurrent at 3 o'clock this morning, for example. Okay? So websites must license every concurrent user. And again, I reference the licensing guide there. You can get a little more about multiplexing and what licensing requirements you might have. Okay? Now let's go through a few scenarios about whether or not cow licensing makes sense. 
Now, let me prefix this part by saying, I know we haven't watched the next video yet, <laughs> but remember that the next video means unlimited devices. Per core model means unlimited users and devices. It's going to be a lot more expensive, okay? So, but it may balance out. So here we have a SQL Server 2012 powered website that sells products over the internet. Is the Cal licensing model something that we can really talk about here? And the answer is no. We don't know how many concurrent users are going to take advantage of the data, so we can't really talk too much about the Cal model. And the standard edition is the most likely candidate. Why? You cannot use core licensing with the business intelligence edition. Okay, so standard edition or enterprise edition would effectively be your big editions. But Scott, what about the web edition? Mm, maybe so. Have to look up what your requirements actually are. All right, let's try another one. You have a manufacturing plant, and they have 40 temperature sensors out on the floor that store their data in a SQL Server 2012 standard edition. So you're given the edition in this case. Okay. You're given the number of devices. These are the non-human operated devices, so they would require device CALs. Would CAL licensing make sense here? It's very possible. We have a, a, a small number, 40. Okay. So are we going to add more sensors later? Like, for example, four years from now, how many sensors might we have? If the answer is, well, we're expanding, we're planning on uh, you know, adding tenfold this number, well, it's probably not going to make sense, okay? Then there's a threshold at which point core licensing is more cost-effective, okay? How many users will be reporting from the data? So we have these 40 temperature sensors, but is that the only devices that will be taking advantage of the data and working with SQL Server? Or will there be analysts, uh, managers, users that are then viewing that data, running queries against that data, writing reports on that data, okay? I would assume you're going to have a lot of that going on, okay? So again, how many concurrent users just adds on top of that 40 temperature sensors, okay? And then you get to that threshold, is the cost of licensing those devices cheaper than a per core license? Again, we have to wait until the next video really to play with that one. All right, what about this one? We have a small accounting department. They have just five users. They have standard edition. They've already identified they want standard. And this will always be a small department. So would a client access license model, a per user licensing model, work here? Okay. I think so. We're not planning on adding a significant number of users or devices later. They're always going to be a small department. I think 25 is still a small department. So the Cal is really nice because you can grow into it. We could buy, say, a 10 Cal license model bundled with the server license today. And then if we need to grow into that later, we could buy a five pack okay, and add on to that pretty easily. Okay. Now, the licensing by addition, this comes straight out of that licensing reference guide that I linked to earlier. You can just see what we're talking about is this server and Cal model. The core-based is the next video. So we're talking about you had to have a server license, and then you also had to pay per user or device, the Cal. Okay, and you can see that the business intelligence and the standard editions are the ones working with that. Okay, and remember, business intelligence, the server CALs are required. Okay, there is no core licensing model, and we will see why in the next video.